Welcome to the Your Creative Adventure podcast. I'm Shelly Hitz, and this is an artist spotlight. I'm so excited to feature different artists just like you on the podcast. And this week, our guest is Kim LeBeau. Hi, Kim. Hey, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I know, it's so fun. Kim was um, one of my early Instagram friends and participated in my lettering challenges way back when, right? Yes, how we met. <laughs> yes, and so it's so fun to see um, the progress both of us have had over the last couple of years as we've known each other, but let me just read a little bit of your bio and then we'll just hop into a little more of your story, which I know will inspire so many. So Kim is a watercolor and lettering artist in Nashville, Tennessee, and it is her desire to use her talent God has given her to glorify him and maybe just brighten someone's day. <laughs> I love that. Come along with her on her art journey on Instagram at love underscore underscore lettered, and she would love to check out your account as well, so make sure to connect with her there, and Kim is like such a huge encourager as well, so you'll get a lot of encouragement from her as well, so thank you, Kim, for coming on and being willing to share your story. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be here. Yes, absolutely. So as we kind of dive in, um, were you always an artist or is this something that kind of came up later in life for you? Well, that's kind of a hard question for me to answer. I have always felt artistic and always been drawn to artsy things, crafts and, um, you know, coloring when I was a kid and, and, um, I would make things throughout the years and people would say, are you an artist? And I would say, oh. <laughs> I would say, I'm not, I'm, I'm artistic. I'm not an artist. Okay. Um, I, I'm glad that I don't say that anymore. Like I can truly yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, in 2016, our family uh, received a, wedding invitation that was beautifully hand lettered and I was so impressed with it that I asked the mother of the groom um I didn't ask I, I mentioned it to the mother of the groom just how pretty it was and and she said yeah Brandy that was that was uh now her daughter-in-law that was the bride um she took a class um because she wanted to learn how to do this to um hand letter her address her own envelopes oh fun and, and I was like what they have glasses <laughs> and so so it was it's funny now that I, when I look back at it that I would not realize that there would be classes for something that's so to, saturated over Instagram <laughs> that I would just be so clueless about it but um so I didn't even know what it was called and um, so I started, um, I think I um, searched like calligraphy on Instagram and, um, you know, that's going to lead you to multiple hand lettering accounts and um, it sparked an interest. And so <clears throat> for Christmas that year, I asked for a hand lettering workbook and I had searched hand lettering tools on Amazon. And so an ad, you know how when you search something on Amazon, you get these ads for whatever it was. It <laughs> whatever. follows you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, with ads. And so I saw the most ingenious, <laughs> the most ingenious, I thought at the time, invention. It was a pen or a marker with a tip on the end of bent like a brush <laughs> it was a brush pin ad and i was like these people are geniuses i can't believe it so i asked for those and i didn't have any clue any idea what i was getting as far as quality or brand and um my husband got them for me but i kind of put them away and i didn't pick them up until 2017 and um when i did pick them up um, I used them and I determined that I was going to use them every day, even if 
I was going to hand letter something, even if it was just one word and it was on a napkin, I was going to letter something every single day. And I think that's about the time that I found you on Instagram and did one of your lettering challenges. And that really helped, gave me some accountability in that area. But I have recently found those brush pins. Oh! <laughs> I cannot believe I learned with those. I can barely use them now. They are so cheap. <laughs> they're so cheap, they don't even have a brand name on them. Oh, and wow. So they're really hard to use. Um, but it was fun at the time to use them and just, you know, see the progression. Um, then my kids talked me into starting an inst uh, after after Christmas. I'm, I got ahead of myself, but my kids talked me into starting an Instagram account. And that's when I found you. So um, yes, Instagram is just amazing. I that's you know I kind of stumbled upon it as well. Like, and I found all these people on Instagram. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, and so you also with the you did the lettering, but then you also started getting into watercolor as well, right? I did, but that didn't come until, I think that might have been closer to 2018. I wow. it just, um, uh, I don't know. There's something about hand lettering and watercolor that go hand in hand. And yeah, it is. People usually do both, not one or the other. Right. I, uh, so they'll find one first and then they'll venture into the other some, for some reason, but that's what happened to me as well. Yeah. yeah. So you now have an Etsy shop and you're selling your work and you've created some lettering workbooks and all of this. Did you hesitate into like turning your passion of art into a business? Like when the opportunity presented itself or were you just like ready? Well, kind of both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely hesitated. Um, but I think I only hesitated because I did not have a vision. Mm. Well, that's not true. I remember three things. Okay. So um, the first one is that I felt incompetent. I felt like um, I've never had an art lesson. I've never been to art school. Um, I didn't know the verbiage. You know what I mean? Like yeah. um, my first watercolor post was totally by accident. It came through a um, one of those subscription boxes. Oh yeah. I remember doing a video and writing my first time watercoloring and I would ask people, what am I doing wrong? You know, <laughs> because I could tell <laughs> what to try, you know. Um, but I felt incompetent and I felt like um, real real artists, you know, like they would, I just thought they would jump all over me and just be like, you're not doing this right. How can you call yourself an artist? You know, you shouldn't be in business for yourself. I, it was crazy, you know, what, what I told myself. And, um, yeah, it's I, like, it sounds like a little bit of like the imposter syndrome, like, you know, who am I to be doing this? Yes, and exactly. Yeah. I know a lot of people listening will be able to relate. I think we all kind of go through some of that at some point. And so just telling you your experience is normal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So um, I thought they would just tell me everything I was doing wrong. And can I just say, I, nothing could be further from the truth. The support <laughs> in this community is remarkable. It is so encouraging. And um, we're all on this journey. And um, I think everyone on Instagram in this community knows that and they're very supportive and encouraging and um, they don't tell you what you're doing wrong unless you ask. <laughs> and then they're very gentle about it. It's, it's really a, a special um, niche, I think, in the community. Um, and then the second thing is that I compared myself a lot. I compared myself. Um, with people who were way further in the journey than I was. Um, I mean, people who had been doing art for years, some of them decades, yeah. um, at them thinking that because they were good, I couldn't be. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, it's ridiculous the lies we tell ourselves and believe. But um, it, 
it never occurred to me that they were further in their journey. Like I thought I was as good as I was going to get. This is the best I can be. I didn't realize that the more I did it, the better I was going to get. And, um, it, it really helped me. I, I think that I saw a post, um, a, on a, someone's feed about don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle or somebody else's end or something like that. And that really, yeah. Me. Um, and then the third thing, like I mentioned earlier was just, I didn't have a clear vision. Um, I didn't have any goals and I felt kind of lost. I knew I was ready. Like everything in me was ready. Uh, once I got past, you know, once I got past the other two issues of comparing and, um, what was the other one? Oh, feeling incompetent. Once I got past those, um, I was ready. Everything was in me, in me was ready to start a business, but I didn't know where to go. I didn't have anything written down. I didn't have, I knew like I wanted to sell. What would it be to see my design on a product that someone would want to buy, but how in the world do I get there kind of thing. Um, so I took some time off. I think that was about the time you were coming out with Etsy Entrepreneur. And I took some time off of Instagram, not to go through Etsy Entrepreneur. I just took off time, <coughs> excuse me, off of social media to um, look through um, what I had, just to sit down and write some goals, look through my art that I already had um, created, and what can I do with this? And I wanted to pray about it. I wanted to... Um, fast a little and just see if God would speak to me. And he did. It only took three days um, before it really, it actually took less, it took less than a day for me to actually get, get on this. Um, okay. I think I'm starting to get some clarity and I'm starting to, to um, have some ideas and I would start writing them down and, um, I decided this is a good time for me to go through the Etsy entrepreneur course. And so I did that. And by the time I was finished, I don't know that I, I think I finished the course by the end of the three days. I had started it long before then, but I finished it during that three days time. And by the time I was done with that three days, um, I, felt like I had something to wrap my brain around and I could move forward and I felt better equipped. <clears throat> yeah. It's so powerful when we take time away from social media, even just a few days, <laughs> it's like to have that clarity and that, that space for, you know, giving God space to really speak to us. So I think that's a great just reminder to anyone who's listening. If you are in a place where you're just feeling confused or you don't know which way to go, maybe just a few days away, you know, from being connected to everything, you know, and just spending that time praying and asking God for his wisdom. Now, one thing that I love about your testimony is, you know, initially when, um, you know, you showed interest in Etsy Entrepreneur, you were like, oh, I just, I don't think I have the money to do this right now. And will you just share a little bit of your testimony about that? Because I think it will encourage someone. I will. Um... So <laughs> I, I was interested in taking it. I wanted to learn how to digitize my art. That was the big draw for me. And um, when I checked into it, um, I think it was, is it $297? Yeah. That, just, so I looked that up and I was, I, had, I was like, oh, that is, I can't even ask my husband for that. I know what he is going to say. He's going to he will be like, mm, not for our classes, <laughs> you know, so yeah. I, I knew that I, I mean, I was having a problem with it just because I knew we were, we were in our finances and, you know, we needed some car repairs and some home repairs. And, and so, um, I, thought, I'm just going to ask, you know, I'm just going to mention it to him. And, and so I did, and he just, kind of, he didn't, he didn't say no, but he gave me the look, you know, the look. That was the funny. look, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the look. 
And so I was like, okay, I'm just not going to ask him again. And then um, I, I think I told you about it just that, you know, I, I wanted to take it and um, I can't remember exactly what went down there, but you encouraged me to step back and pray about it and ask God to provide the funds. And if he provided the funds, then I would know. And even then, Shelly, I was like, you know what? If God dropped $300 in my mailbox today, <laughs> I go to art classes is what I was thinking. I was like, it's still going to go to a home repair or a car repair. He's just not going to be okay with him spending $300 on on a class and um so but i did i prayed and i was like lord if if i'm supposed to take this class then provide the money and let me know for sure that that's what it's supposed to go to and yeah and put phil on board with it right so i did and um someone provided two-thirds of the class for me and so that was very obvious that I was supposed to come up with the other $100 and um, take the class. Yeah. And I love that because, you know, you could have just said, oh, uh, it's just, I can't do it. But, you know, you, you took my advice and you said, you know, I'm going to pray about it. And God provided. And I love, like, you took what you learned in the class and then you launched your first collection last fall, was it? Yeah. Yes. And then you... Yeah. And then you had a winter collection. And um, since then, you've also taken, you know, some of the, what you learned with the digitizing and you created um, lettering practice sheets that you're now selling. Yeah. And, and um, those have been very successful. I have been very surprised at the response to those. I'm very humbled by it. Like, who knew? I never knew that God could take... I, I always felt artistic and I would do things. I would always ask God to use my gift. Like people would say that their gift was hospitality or their gift was, I don't know. Some gifts are just very obvious. And right. They're supposed to be used. But in the church, I didn't know how art could be used. And so I would do things like that the obvious things like um, help build a set for the Christmas play or, you know, paint a mural on the wall for, uh, for the youth group or something like that. But um, I just never felt like my gifts were being utilized. And now I feel like I use it daily, you know, like God yeah. is using, he's finally, finally using it, you know, but um uh, it, it's really good to see it coming coming together, and, and it's exciting to to think about what is going to happen in the future. Yeah, because now you're actually working on a lettering book, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm in the beginning stages of that. Yeah, and that's really exciting. I mean, who would have you know? Would you have ever dreamed that like you'd be working on publishing a lettering workbook? No, never. Never, <laughs> never would have. I'm excited about it. Yes. Never say never, right? No. And um, tell us a little bit. You've also taught some classes on Skillshare. I have. I've, um, I have those kind of, I have kind of put those on the back burner just a little bit. Not, I am not going to forget about them. I'm going to come back and revisit those. But I feel really drawn towards the book right now. And yes. And when, on that but I do have a few a couple of I have two two classes one is on um, how to create a watercolor chart and to choose a cohesive uh, watercolor palette and then the other one is on leaf making how to paint watercolor leaves so yeah and what I love about Skillshare is that really it truly can be a passive income you know once you have the classes up and created and people are just continuing to find your classes and that sort of thing and so you can still have that going and still be getting some paid something from Skillshare every month as you're working on your book <laughs> I love that I love that like so far everything I've done 
is um, generating a passive income. That is, I didn't even know anything about a passive income when I first started this. So it's very exciting to me. Yeah, because your lettering practice sheets, they're digital downloads on Etsy, right. which I mean, can pretty much be passive in that you're just maybe dealing with a little bit of customer support here and there, but you know, that's really able to be that. And then the collections that you've launched, it was, um, you know, they're printed on things. It's not like you're creating something custom every time for someone. And so even though like, you know, you're having to put in the orders or ship them out or something like that. It's, um, you know, it's definitely a lot more scalable. <laughs> yeah. I think the only inventory that I keep are note cards. Yeah. Everything else is, uh, drop shipped. So, yeah, which is awesome. So, um, you know, you've taken the Etsy entrepreneur as well as my Etsy shop makeover courses. And, um, what, what would you say, um, has been your practical takeaways from those courses or what do you think they gave you as you went through them? Well, they've definitely been, um, instrumental is the word that comes to mind, but I feel like that's probably not strong enough. Um, <laughs> been very instrumental in making all of this happen for me. It, they've been a wealth of, information and resources. Um, I had an Etsy shop. I opened really just because my husband wanted me to open it. I had absolutely zero interest in that Etsy shop. I had wow. one want a shop, um, but he wanted me to put my stuff up and, and I said, I'll put it up, but you have to run it. <laughs> uh, it didn't work out that way, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did get it up and running, but he didn't, you know, I took it if orders came in, which was right. rarity that even anything even sold. So um, I really wasn't doing anything with it. Um, I didn't know, I didn't care about it. And um, it was kind of stuck. Um, even if I had a vision for it, I wouldn't have known how to take it where it needed to be. Um, I didn't, wouldn't know how to get there. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like a roadmap, kind of like, okay, this is the next stop. This is the next stop. <laughs> yes. So uh, in the Etsy entrepreneur course and Etsy shop makeover, but um, first, I, I guess I'll talk mainly about Etsy entrepreneur. I think that my favorite thing about, um, I love that you tell us everything. You've got all the juice. You give us all the goodies and you don't hold anything back. You told us which shops to use, how to keep our taxes organized, how to be legal in our business, um, the formula for pricing your artwork, um, how to digitize it. Um, and with the digitizing, um, that was really my main draw to the, to the course. And I, what I loved about it is I could, I'm not real techie, I'm way more than I used to be, uh, but, but I'm not real techie and I couldn't, um, I, I would just stop the video and I would rewind and I'd watch it again and, you know, I'd skip ahead if I already knew something. Um, but that course was key to my growth, to my, um, my, personal growth and my business growth. And it was essential for me to take the next step into becoming what I feel like is a real up and running business. That's like we talked about generating passive income that I really just don't, I'm not sitting at a table hand lettering mugs you know, one by one, you know, right. make the design and that's it. Um, and then for Etsy shop makeover, once I, once I got products in my shop, um, I feel like these two programs just go hand in hand because I could have all of that stuff in my shop and still not get any traffic to it. So right. the Etsy shop makeover course was essential for knowing how to make my shop visible 
Yes. And um, the online tools that you share for that are, I feel like they're like little nuggets of, of um, secret nuggets that are just <laughs> <laughs> little, nobody talks about them on Instagram. So, or yeah. anyway, I say Instagram because it's my, it's my main platform. I don't, I'm not really on Facebook much. And, and so when I say Instagram, I really mean social media. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But when I discovered those, they kind of rocked my world a little bit. So um, after the first week of optimizing my Etsy shop through Etsy shop makeover, after I did that, I know people are not going to believe me when I say this. <laughs> it is very, it is true. And we have done the math over and we did it. I, I don't know how many times I figured the math. I even called my daughter. <laughs> who's, who's a, she has a physics major and a minor in math. I even call her to tell me if, I, if this is right. It increased traffic over 500%. Wow. So I just said that was a pretty, that's a lot. <laughs> that was yes. Crazy. And now we were talking the other day and now like people like that are strangers are finding you and buying your lettering practice sheets and you know, yes. some of your other things. And because you've done these steps of optimizing and you know, the things that, you know, I recommend in the course. And so how exciting is that? <laughs> Very exciting. It, it's, um, People, you know, from other countries are buying my hand lettering worksheets. Oh, so, fun. So, yeah, it's fun to see that and see where, where they are. Yeah. And it's just been fun to watch you because I've watched you from the beginning and, you know, I would say, oh, I think you should do this or that. And you'd be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and I, it was more like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, well, Shelly said to. So, <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, that what would Jesus do thing? <laughs> in my house? It's what would Shelly do? <laughs> but I think I saw you finally have that mindset breakthrough, you know, where your confidence started to come and, you know, from Christ, obviously that's where your confidence comes from. But then it was just so neat to see you like launch your um, collections and then launch your Skillshare classes and your lettering practice sheets. And now you're working on your book and it's like every little step, it's just like another, um, just another way that God is using you and your art as you take those brave steps. Cause it, it is, you have to be brave to put your art out there, right? <laughs> sure. It's not a comfortable thing to do. Yeah. I mean, you, you keep taking those brave steps. And so it's just so exciting to see where you're at today as an artist in your art business. And I'm just so proud of you. Well, thank you. You have been a huge support and encourager. Cheer, you're my cheerleader. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. And so I know there's other people that are probably listening right now that either are in the process and maybe they've they've tried and they haven't had successes yet, or they are just like where you were previously, just with those, the mindset issues or just the different things holding them back. Um, do you have any words of encouragement or advice for someone who might be in that position? Yeah. Um, I would say not to compare yourself to other artists that your gift is not my gift and my gift is not your gift your style is not my style your strengths are not my strengths um, god has given each one of us different strengths and styles and to find those you have to take the plunge you can't find them sitting on this on the sidelines you have to take the jump and um, take the plunge and get in there and find out that's really the only way to do it. And by taking the plunge, um, maybe the first step is to practice. And practicing, practice, practice, practice. I cannot speak yes. Every established lettering and watercoloring or any kind of artist, period, will tell you the same thing. That, you know, they are not as good as they are because they just woke up one day and decided to paint unless there's some sort of child prodigy or something. That's not, 
that's not what <laughs> that's not right <laughs> your first piece may not be very good but with each day you're gonna get better and better um there's something that there's a uh, a saying that my son likes to quote I don't know if it's his quote or if he heard it somewhere, but he says, you're good at what you practice. Oh, yeah. Um, that I think that is so true. And I thought a hundred times I'm going to letter that on something and I still haven't done it, but maybe this will prompt me. But um, when you practice, you find your style. Yes. And your style is you. It's a reflection of you and it becomes your brand. So practice, practice, practice. So one is don't compare, two is practice. And three, I would really encourage you to take a social media break. I think it is, um, it clears your mind from lies, from um, just unnecessary garbage that can come in and um, steal your joy or your confidence. And um, it also creates a very good window of boredom that, <laughs> that good things come from. Yeah. You will not be bored for long. You're going to find something to do, and it could be creating art. So those are the three things I would say. Don't compare, practice, and take a break from social media. Yeah. And I think um, that quote that you were saying, I think that could be something that you hand letter and then put it into your upcoming book. <laughs> yes, yeah. There you go. Yeah, see, Shelly said it. It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I do, I do think like your number one and number three kind of go together, the comparing and the social media, um, that can be part of what happens. And I recently realized with my own personal self that I was feeling some confusion and just some overwhelm and some just different things. And I asked and I prayed, I asked Lord, the Lord, what it was, what, you know, where it was coming from. And I realized like there were, there were certain things on social media that, you know, no matter where you're at, there's always someone that's ahead of you. <laughs> there's always someone that you can compare to. There's always someone that, you know, you can, you know, be seeing everything they're doing and feel like, Oh, I can't keep up with them. And I just, you know, the Lord just showed me, I just needed to mute or, you know, on Instagram, you can mute people, their stories and their, their posts for a season. And then you can come back and, you know, reconnect with, you know, their stuff. But I had to do that. And then just um, unfollow some groups on Facebook that were just, there were so many posts and so many things that were just overwhelming me. And once I did that, it was like the peace just came and I was like, whoa. And so, you know, sometimes it can just be little steps that you take, whether it's a three day social media fast, or it's, you know, actually there's certain people that you're, you're noticing is triggering something with you. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to not follow these people forever, but I just need a break, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of times it get just that whole, um, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, that the whole idea of that is so ridiculous. It is. It's, yeah. And, and a lot of it just for me, you know, I hate to keep <laughs> dropping a nail in the coffin, but it comes from comparing. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think, I mean, I hear it over and over and over and over again. And so I think that's such a great point, you know, just to end on of just like, focusing on who you are. And so when I recently did this and I um, made a few changes to my feeds or whatever, the Lord's like, Shelly, I want you to focus on the path I have for you. It's different than anyone else's. You know, I've gifted you differently and it's going to look differently, but I want you to focus on me and then focus on what I've given you to do. Not what not focusing on what everyone else, all your competitors or, you know, you know, the, what everyone else is doing. Um, but focus on what I have for you to do. And so I swear I encourage each one of you that are listening as well, like focus on like, what is it God has you to do and that you don't have to do everything that everyone else is doing, but ask him, you know, maybe take that social media fast and ask him like, what is it that you have for me in this season? And he will tell you, he will share with you.
So Kim, if people have resonated with you, if they want to connect with you further, um, where, what's the best place for them to find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at love underscore underscore lettered. Um, and then I am on Facebook under love lettered decor. Um, but I'm not, I don't use that very much. It's probably something coming in the future for me, but um, yeah, right now the main, uh, you can find me on Etsy also, and that's also love lettered decor. And, um, the, I think the Instagram is probably the best way to get me. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's where, where you're hanging out the most. And um, Kim's involved in a lot of different things and, you know, just challenges or, you know, different things going on. So connect with her, um, check out what she has to offer and take her Skillshare classes. <laughs> Go check out her lettering practice sheets and just, um, you know, watch and be inspired with what other artists are doing. I love how it's, you know, a lot of times we do compare, but you know, on Instagram, we're just always cheering each other on as well. So, um, thank you so much for being here today, Kim. And, um, I'm excited to see where God takes you next. Oh, thank you so much, Shelly. Thank you for having me. It's been, it's been an honor for sure. And thank you all for listening and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, YouTube friends. We're so glad that you're here. Make sure that you click the red subscribe button and then click the bell next to it to make sure that you're subscribed and that you'll get notifications when we post new videos for you. Before you leave, I wanted to share with you a free gift. I have a free training called How You Can Earn a Full-Time Income as an Artist, a $97 value for free, and you can sign up for that free gift at yourcreativeadventure.com forward slash artist income. And if you've wanted to turn your passion for art into income, then this training is for you. So you're going to learn 10 real life examples of what's working today to earn money, money as an artist. They're real life case studies. I'm going to share with you how diversifying your income can help you grow your art business much faster. You may struggle if you're relying on one income stream only. You'll learn how to sell your artwork online, the specific partnerships you should consider as an artist, and two passive income streams that can be very profitable. And the cool thing is that artists that have taken this free training are getting results. For example, Valerie Lynn said 10 days after watching the webinar, she had already sold $400 worth of art. And Shannon Santa Maria said, that after watching the webinar, she took the risk and took her work to a boutique and sold over half of her items. What do you have to lose? There are so many opportunities for us as artists today. Sign up for free at yourcreativeadventure.com forward slash artist income, and then let me know your takeaways and your results. Tag me at your creative adventure. I can't wait to help you make money as an artist doing what you love. This is Shelly Hitz. Thank you so much for joining me in this free training.